Hello, this is Caleb with App Design Tips, and in this video, I'm going to show you the properties panel. To show you how the properties panel works, I want to start off with this file here. And this file has an assortment of different objects that will help us learn how the properties panel changes when you click on each one. And first off, I'll just click on this artboard name to select the artboard. And we have some unique properties in here like vertical scrolling for the artboard or no scrolling. And then we have the viewport height or the height of the device. So 667 is the height of an iPhone screen. So that means if I stretch this down further, it still shows me this viewport height, this 667, and showing me the main content is going to land in this region here until we scroll. We also have an option here for grids, and this grid is 8 pixels by 8 pixels. If you choose to change the grid size, you can either make that a default or you can use the default that you have. So that's the properties panel for an artboard. So now if we click on an image, the properties options change a little bit. We can change the opacity of an image. We can also change the width of an image. And notice how the height changes as well, and that's because we have this lock enabled so it constrains the width and the height. And if we disable this, we can change that width again, and it will change the width and leave the height the same. With most images, you want to keep this locked so your images don't look skewed. Now we have an option to rotate here, so I'll type 35 and it'll rotate to 35 degrees. And we can add a border radius here of 30. There may be unique cases where you'll want to add individual corner radiuses for each corner. So if you want to do this, you can click on this button here. And you can change each radius starting with the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. Or if you'd like, you can change the radius by clicking on this little circle close to the image. You can drag that in and out, and if you hold down Option, you can control the radius of each corner individually. Using the Fill option, we can add a new fill color and change this image to be a filled shape. So instead of this being an image now, I change this to a shape. So it's no longer an image anymore, so I'll just undo that. Now I'm going to add a border here, and I'll go ahead and change the border color, and then you can edit the weight of this border, the size, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Now you have a shadow option and the ability to change the X value and Y value of that shadow that's being cast, and also the blur, so how blurry that shadow is going to be. Now we can also choose to add a background blur, and what this does is blurs anything that's behind the image. So we have a circle behind this, and you can choose the blur amount, the brightness level of the image, or the opacity of the image. So when it's completely opaque, you're not able to see any objects behind it, so in order to get this blurred effect, you'll want to have some level of opacity enabled on here. If you click on this little drop-down arrow, we have another option for object blur. And all this does is just blur this image, the entire image. So now even though there's a circle behind it, what this is doing is blurring the actual image and not the objects behind. So you're not able to see anything behind any blurred objects. So the properties panel options for rectangles work much the same way. You have the same editing capabilities. And also with ellipses, but the only thing that's different with ellipses is you don't have that radius control because this is a circle and not a rectangle. And when you select text, you have this whole new panel inside the properties panel to change the font style, the weight, the size, um, left, center, right justification, and things like that. We also have character spacing and line spacing here below. The properties panel is a little unique for vector images. So here we have some of the same types of properties. You can change the width and the height, the rotation, and some of the appearance styles. You don't have the radius controls, but if you double click on this vector, and it'll show all the points that make up this vector's path. And you can select any of these points and drag it around, and change the X and Y value of this point. So we can change the color of the icon here to red. And notice that gives us a hue, saturation, brightness, and alpha numeric value. V 
The alpha is how we can change the transparency of an object or a color. We also have the hex value of this color if we want to copy this and paste it on any other object's uh, color settings. Or you can save this color inside the document palette. And now if I click on another object, I can click inside fill and use this same color and opacity.